guys all know about my top five video series. I usually do top five gods for solo or whatever, like when it comes to like ranked or competitive, I have tier lists and all that. But something I don't usually do is my top five favorite gods to play right now and the builds and how to play them in the current meta. Um, I thought it would be a cool idea for a video to show you guys what I'm having a lot of fun with, the, the characters that I think either are pretty fun right now or maybe are pretty good or maybe a combination of both. You know, it doesn't have to be the objective top five or however objective you can be about something like that. So yeah, I'm just going to show you guys their builds, the actual characters that I like, and maybe a little bit about how to play them right now. So we're going to have a top five and of course an honorable mention like we usually do in these kind of videos. So let's go ahead and get right into it. My fifth favorite god to play right now is going to be Hercules. I actually am enjoying Herc once again in this meta. Um, he's fallen off a bit in support. That means that us soul leaners maybe can get a, get more of a chance to play him now. Um, you know, not always going to have to have him have that pressure in dual lane. What I've been doing on him is either going teleport. You can go teleport if you're comfortable with that. Or you can just go blink first item. Honestly, blink is really good as well. It's going to allow you to get some early kills. Um, a lot of early kill pressure. You can go beads if they have like an Ares or just a ton of CC. You know, having beads to be able to use your, your one when they have cripples and stuff like that is actually pretty good. And if you don't need CC... Uh, immunity and you already have like a blink you can always look to go thorns lots of hunters in the meta and crit is in the meta right now so thorns is still definitely viable in my opinion lately what i've been doing is i've been going teleport boots to chalice and plus some multi pots and what i've been doing is i've been tping in with full boots as soon as i can because the hercules boots power spike is one of the most insane power spikes in the game you're going to catch a lot of people off guard if you tp in with his full boots and just start hitting the enemy solo with the hercules passive plus your full boots and you're going to one shot people so that's something that you can still go i still like breastplate a lot on this character just having cdr um, early game that mana is going to make it very very hard for you to get ganked and killed and plus, you don't really need to build like a bruiser on Hercules um, like specifically just because his passive gives you so much power and you already do a lot of base damage. So what I've usually been going is the movement speed build. This actually gives you magical protections now. So with these three items, you're going to be absolutely unkillable in the mid game. You throw in a shield of regrowth here to round out the, the core of the build. And now you're going to be very, very fast. You're going to have full CDR when you have your unupgraded blue buff going to be overcapped when you have your upgraded but that doesn't matter we don't care about overcapping cdr based off the blue buff and then you can round it out with pretty much whatever you want whatever you need in that specific game spirit robe and mantle are both very viable options when it comes to this next item you get a ton of health from wing blade plus shield of regrowth so you don't necessarily need to go a health item here like urchin you don't you can kind of get away with more of a greedy item like spirit robe or mantle um, and then you can kind of just round it out with whatever you need. Like I said, it depends really on the game. Uh, which blade, just to throw in a little bit more movement speed, say they have a lot of auto attackers, that's something you can do. You're going to be very, very fast with this build. If you feel like you want to do a little bit more damage, you can throw in a void shield. Um, if they don't really have a lot of anti-heal, or if they have anti-heal and you just have like other healers on your team, cad shield is always a nice option as well. It is getting nerfed next patch, but it's still going to be a viable option just for some power, some prots, and some health. Um, the only thing about this build is that you're not going to have Pridwin with it, but you know, at the end of the day, you could late game sell your boot or your boots, your breastplate for a Pridwin and have that in the later stages and then maybe sell your boots for like a void shield just to round it out so you have some physical prop combined with magical prop. But um, you know, it's still gonna be still gonna be pretty nice to have that breastplate throughout most of the game with that CDR and mana that's gonna be providing you. So yeah, having a lot of fun with Hercules right now. Um, one of my favorite characters of all time. So glad that he actually kind of fits in this meta in the slow lane. So definitely boots rushing with TP. You're going to get a lot of early game kills with that. Maybe it's cheese, maybe it's not, but either way, something you should look to try to do. My next favorite god right now, I might surprise some of you, is Bologna, actually. I'm actually having a ton of fun with Bologna, especially because of this item alone. Destal is just really fun on her. Not surprised by that in the slightest. When Destal was in the game a while ago, Bologna was one of the top picks, and she was also really fun, just healing with the AoE auto attacks, just, you know, having that... That presence across the map, just being able to stay out for long periods of time and farm just because you're healing off of every single auto attack that you have. And Bologna is an auto attack focused character. On this character, you can go blink first item. You can go horrific if you're trying to get some kills in lane and they don't have any like slow immunity or CC immunity. You could honestly go something like Sunder, Beads. It really is up to you. Teleport if you're comfortable with that. You can do pretty much whatever you want. I do recommend getting Beads um, in a lot of games just because... People are going to be able to CC you after you ult in, and you're not going to be able to chase them out. And if, especially if you go more of a damaging build, which I'm going to show you, having that beads is going to allow you to stick to people and actually, you know, chop them down. So, uh, Ninja Tab I always on Bologna when you have Death Roll, just because it's going to allow you to auto attack a little bit more, get you more healing, and of course it's going to allow your your three to heal more. It's going to allow you to, to um, get more block stacks in your one. Um, just very very nice to have. 
Um, it depends on what you're against in lane specifically, but a lot of times uh, you're going to be against the physical, so you can go straight into Berserkers. What I actually like to do is do something like Berserkers Witchblade. You get some health from this combined with the little pros that you get from Berserkers. It's actually a nice little combo, plus the movement speed. Then we go straight into a Talisman of Energy. I really, really like that right now. And then it kind of depends on the game and what you need uh, in, in that specific game. Um, you can go whatever you really need. Spirit Robe, Mantle are always good. Um, you can honestly go something like a, a Pridwin right here, give you some CDR. You don't need CDR on Bologna, but ulting in and getting that shield right when you ult in is pretty nice, to be honest. And then what you want to do is upgrade your Death Soul into Death Embrace. I guess I can't show it specifically. Can I? No, it's not going to show me. But yeah, you just upgrade this into Death's Embrace, the one that allows you to heal 3% um, of your health, or what is it, 3%, 4% of your health every auto attack? Something crazy like that. Um, and that would be the final build. You can also always sell Ninja Tabai for whatever you need. I always like Void Shield right now. I think Void Shield's a very, very good item right now just because there's going to be a lot of carries with a ton of prots because of Sentinel's Embrace. Um, is it Sentinel's Embrace? Yeah. The one that just is basically Gauntlet of Thieves on steroids. So that percent pen, the 15% that you get from Void Shield, is going to allow you to dive the backline pretty well, and it's going to be very efficient for you. So a build similar to this is going to be pretty nice. You can also sell... Void Shield for something like Stone Cutting. It's going to also give you pen, but it's going to give you a decent amount more damage because it's 50 power. A little bit of movement speed and all that. And the flat pen's going to be coming in clutch either way. Um, it's also good around objectives. So if they have a magical heavy comp, you can also go Talisman of Energy plus Shogun's. I actually like this combo right now. You get the health from Talisman of Energy and movement speed, MP5, attack speed. Combine that with the attack speed that you get from Shogun's. And you're going to be auto attacking very, very fast. So if they have like a double mage, say like a Hebo jungle and Alquang jungle plus a mage mid lane, this is a build that you can look to go as well. Um, yeah, moving on. I guess I forgot to mention on Hercules, um, you can, since you don't go, in my build, you don't go a starter item early, you can look to go a different starter item uh, upgrade later on. I think Sigil, Siegel, Siegel I call it, but Sigil, whatever, but we call it Siegel around here, of the old guard is actually really nice on him. So is the other one, the Infused Siegel. Um, you could go something like a Tainted Steel upgrade if they have a lot of healing. A Tainted Breastplate is my preferred one. I think Tainted Amulet's actually pretty bad, so you shouldn't go that. And you can also always go something like if you want to mess around, you can go something like uh, the War Flag, which, I mean, I don't think the War Flag upgrades are really that viable, but they're getting buffed next patch, I believe. So that's something you can do. And you can never really go wrong with just Sentinel's Embrace. This just makes you so, so tanky. So um, these are these are items that you can look to go um, in that like fifth or sixth item slot, depending on the game. But all are viable. And I think all are definitely something that you can look to get in a greedy build like I showed you before. My third favorite god to play right now is Tyr with Bluestone. That is a mandatory. This is why this character is so fun, and I actually think it's pretty good right now. Bluestone just allows him to full clear at level 3, or at level 2, rather. He literally full clears the wave at level 2 if you hit all the minions with all the abilities, and you're going to get so much pressure over most characters right now in the meta, and it's going to allow you to get totem. It's going to allow you to snowball the lane, because if they are if they look to try and clear the wave when you full clear the wave at level 2, you're going to hit level 3 off that wave, and you're going to be able to go on them with like a, a 2 points in your 1 or a 2 points in your 2, whatever you prefer and you're gonna do a lot of damage to them and just get so much pressure over them. This is one of those characters that Blink First is actually really nice on. It's gonna give you a lot of kill pressure in lane, allow you to make plays whether you're rotating or just staying in your lane looking for kills, um, or you know maybe invading blues and stuff like that. Um, Beads I think is actually pretty nice on him just because you have a lot of channeled abilities. Even though your passive helps you with CC, still having beads so you can pre-beads things or just you know allow you to get some of your channeled abilities off is always nice. Um, other than that, you can maybe look to go something like a Sunder or Horrific. Horrific if they have a uh, auto attack heavy comp, but I use, I usually always go Blink Beads or Blink TP right now in this meta. Um, Warrior Tab I always on tier. We go into a Breastplate similar to uh, to Herc. Just having that CDR early game I think is just just really good for him, and you don't really need uh, you don't really exactly want Pridwin on tier, and um, you just have a lot of base damage when you have Bluestone Warrior Tab I, so that CDR is going to help you a lot with that. What I've been doing is going Breastplate straight into Shifters, and this mid-game power spike on tier is insane. You are so hard to kill with the procs that you get from all these items, plus your, you know, your blue stance. And if you round out the core of the build with a wing blade, you're going to be super fast. Whenever they slow you, you're just going to speed up more and get your fearlesses off. You're going to do a ton of damage in the mid-game, like I said. Be very, very hard to kill. Very, very slippery. And then you can do whatever you want from here. I actually like going Witchblade a lot. Going to give you a little bit more CDR, which is very, very good on tier. Going to help you with those auto attackers, which are very prevalent in the meta right now. I personally um, haven't been too happy or too excited about the Bluestone upgrades in general. So whenever I buy Bluestone on tier, I usually sell it. Um, you can go a tank item here if you really need that late game. 
something like a bulwark is always good on a character like this just give you that health and that tankiness late game if you're just owning you feel like you're tanky enough for their magicals you're really really slippery because you have beads you have to think of beads um, i talked about this in a previous video but you have to think of beads as like a way to avoid magical damage um because it kind of lets you get out of that cc and most mages are going to be using their abilities off of cc so if you're really slippery because you have slow immunity you're already slippery because of your passive you have beads then maybe you're not going to have to worry about their magical damage too much and you can get greedy with your build here and go a damage item you know something like a heart seeker um something like an erendite maybe like a void shield just any of those items are definitely viable but keep in mind you can't go an upgraded starter item just because you're going to be starting every game as tier with bluestone that's the reason you would pick him and that's the reason i think he's really fun right now so moving on this might come as a big surprise to a lot of people, but my number two right now is actually Athena. I am having so much fun with playing Athena solo with these two items, Death's Toll and Teleport. The reason for this is you just have so much impact across the map. You can hyper farm everywhere because you always have your ults up. You always have a teleport up. You can get around the map very quickly with both of those things. You can stay out on the map for a very long time because you have Death's Toll. And guess what? Athena, if you haven't played Smite in a few months, has a, an AoE auto attack now, so she procs Death's Toll in an AoE on minions, on jungle camps. She also procs it in an AoE with her passive, her reach. You throw that through all the minions, that's going to proc Death's Toll in an AoE. And that's just like, it's, just a, it's such a fun interaction to have, and especially on a character like Athena, who's a guardian, who never could proc Death's Toll in the past. So I'm just having so much fun with this. Um, you don't even have to go teleport. You can kind of use your ults as a teleport and be a little bit more greedy with your start. Go something like a blink, go something like a sunder, um, and just have like that all that kill pressure in lane. That's really up to you. I just prefer the teleport. It's a nice safety net. It allows you to get away with some greedy builds. Pretty much do whatever you want. I've been going at purple boots straight into binding almost always. Uh, I just think this combo, when you have these three items, you do a lot of damage. Uh, you, you have a ton of pressure on the map because you have so much power from all three of these items. just allows you to clear really fast, which is usually where guardians lack a little bit. Um, but just with these three items, you're going to hyper farm really hard. I actually really like mystical as well. You're going to be sticking to a lot of the thing about athena is next patch she's going to have damage on her taunt first of all that's going to be awesome i'm so excited about that but um the thing about her right now and just in general is that you know once your three is down you're not really that threatening with your damage but you are very tanky and very hard to deal with so if you can just stick near people with mystical mail it's going to carry a lot of your damage load and if you keep people cc'd with your taunts and stuff they're just going to be you know taking extra ticks of this mystical mail which can be very very good for that um, this is kind of whatever you can take the build wherever you want from here uh, void stone if you want to have a little bit more magical defense and do a little bit more damage is always an option um, I've actually been going something like a urchin into a pridwin here um, I just feel like I don't really have to worry about magical damage too much these days and stone of binding combined with the just the magical props from you get the, from these items you're gonna be you know in a pretty good spot and you know, at the end of the day, you're selling Destal towards the late game as Athena just because the upgrades aren't going to be too good for you. You're not going to make too much use out of them. So you can kind of go your magical defense item, really, if you need it here. You can just straight up go Wing Blade. That's going to be really nice on Athena. Speed her up. You know, make her um, immune to slows, which is really, really nice for getting locked down because one of Athena's weaknesses is that she has a charge up on her dash and it's pretty easy to target out. So stuff like Wing Blades can really help you with that. You can also go like a Mantle here and just be as tanky as humanly possible um, and, you know, just be kind of a menace across the map. I think Blink is good on her. Beads is also a viable option on Athena, like because like I said before, her weakness is, is maybe getting locked down with her charge on her dash, or maybe just her dash is down. Um, but yeah, you just do so much damage with this build, especially with Pridwin. You ult, say you are you have like a Nemesis jungle, you have like a set jungle, or just somebody just you know running havoc on the enemy backline. If you ult onto that jungler with your Pridwin proc, you're going to be able to chase them out with a Mystical Mail ticks with your Pridwin proc, the extra damage that you just have in your kit because Athena does actually do some good base damage if you're able to hit your dash and your three combos. Um, and yeah, I just think this character is so fun, mainly because of Teleport and Death Soul, so give that a try if you would like to. My honorable mention before we get to number one is going to be Fenrir, the Doge. He's have, he, I'm having a lot of fun with him, and it's specifically because of this build. Boots Rush, or not Boots Rush, you can always go something like a Death Toll if you're more comfortable with that, or you can go something like a Warrior's Axe. Um, honestly, probably for the most part, I've been going Death Toll uh, and then going into Boots, but you could also Boots Rush and look to go that. But the build that I've been having fun with is Stone Cutting might seem crazy but stone cutting into frostbound um stone cutting is really cheap now 2350 for 50 power 7 percent movement speed 30 flat reduction for prots in in the passive which also gives it to you so it's actually kind of like a tank item in a way if you just trade for a while straight into frostbound you are so so um i guess threatening with your damage with this kind of build um, the only thing you're going to have to worry about is obviously you're not going to be that tanky, but Fender is a pretty safe character. And if you max your two and have Death Toll, you're just going to be able to 1v1 anyone on the map with this build. 
and even when you get ganked, you can maybe turn a lot of those ganks. And the cool thing about this build is it allows you to get Pridwin later on in the build, which is one of Fender's best items, in my opinion, doing something like a Void Shield into a Pridwin and then upgrading your Death Toll into Death's Embrace, if you can um, do that like this, and then having that as your full build. And always, if you're, you're worried about their magical damage at this point in the game, you can go something like a Wing Blade, you can go something like an Oni Hunters to uh, you know round out your tankiness and just be very, very hard to kill across the map. Um, I just like this build so much because it, it makes the transition into Pridwid so nice. Um, and it allows you to not have to buy Breastplate early game and just be very, very aggressive as far as your, your damage. So Fenrir in the honorable mention list right now. Pretty good. And then last but not least, coming in at number one. I bet you every time I do this this type of video and I come in at number one, I say last but not least. But that's okay. Hope you guys don't care. Coming in at number one is Cerberus. He is my favorite character right now. I have so much fun with this character. Basically every single game I do a boots to start with a chalice and um, some multi-pots and then I go TP. You don't even have to go TP. I just do it in rank because I'm just like talking in my chat. I'm not really focusing that much and it kind of allows me to get away with these greedy builds and kind of just chill. But if you're like really tryharding, I'd recommend going something like a blink, going something like a beads if you need to worry about their CC um, so you can get your like your twos off and stuff like that. Or you can honestly go something really aggressive, something like a horrific if they have no slow immunity like I said before. Um, but I've been rushing purple boots. Purple boots always. I don't ever go cooldown boots on Serb. I don't think you need it. Almost always it just works out where I have either have my TP up and I can just TP in because I have 1700 gold. And I can buy binding and just have that huge power spike in the lane. But um, you could also look to go just straight up mystical mail first item and then a binding. I do recommend that you have binding somewhere in your build. It's just a very, very nice item on a uh, server especially. Um, but, you know. You can either get it right here or right here. Not really too big of a deal. If they have a lot of magical damage, then I'd go a Void Stone. Then just, this just allows you to do so much damage across the map. The Void Stone pen, the Stone of Binding pen, plus your two uh, Prot Shred is just so good in this meta when people are a little bit tankier because they have items you know, like Sentinel's Embrace on them, plus Gauntlet of Thebes and stuff like that. So uh, just having all this pen makes Serb a pretty good character. I, he's in my top five, I think. Uh, I had him in my top five, but he's definitely my number one right now as far as just having fun. I just really enjoy him. You go Void Steel there, Void Stone there, you're going to go Pridwin here. And then depending if you didn't buy, like a lot of times I don't have my starter item at the beginning of the game, so I can go whatever I want later on. Tainted Breastplate is insane on Cerberus. If you ever hit anybody with your abilities or are near them, you're going to have your Serb passive anti-heal plus Tainted Breastplate. And healers are very, very uh, prevalent in the meta right now. So you're going to be having like 70, 75% or something like that anti-heal on people. That's just insane. So much value out of the anti-heal. So that's how you can go. If they don't have healers, then you can always go something like a Sentinel's Embrace. I've just been messing around with pretty much every starter item you can think of on Serb late game. And I think every single one is, actually is pretty good. Um, I even went alternate timeline in a serve game the other day. Fuse Seagull is really, really nice on him. You guys have seen me buy that just because it does magical damage in the passive and you have a bunch of prot shred on service with your items plus your, your kit. So that's just really, really big on him as well. Um, and then, of course, you could always go something like... So I've actually been messing around with Destal on Cerberus because it actually procs off your, your Phantom Ghosts, and it's it's just pretty nice on him. Although I think in a real game, you're not going to upgrade it late game. You could probably go Destal in a real game if you're really tryharding, but you're not going to upgrade it on him. And so if you go Destal early, you might want to round out the build with like a Mantle just because you won't be able to go any of the other starter items because you can only build one. So um, yeah, that's pretty much the build. The only thing I'd say that you could change about the build is if they don't have a lot of magical damage that you're worried about, then you can go something like an Urchin actually into a Pridwin and then go whatever starter item upgrade that you would want later on. Or you could even go something like, if you're really, really trying to be aggressive and you just are really far ahead, you can go something like a Spear of the Magus or a Spear of Desso, whatever you prefer. Magus, obviously you do more damage, but Spear of Desso can be good for the CDR. So really up to you. But yeah, Cerberus, the, I have Fenrir and Cerberus in my top five gods right now. So as you guys can see, I like playing dogs, I guess. Uh, but yeah, that's my top five plus an honorable mention, my favorite gods right now and how to kind of build them and play them in ranked um, and get away with them. So I hope you guys enjoyed the list. Try them out. Let me know if you guys agree. Are you having fun with these characters as much as I am? Hopefully you are, but maybe it's just, you know, I, I, I'm I very flavor of the month. I like to switch it up. I never play the same god all that much, you know. I was never I was never the type of person to main a god throughout my smite career. I've always kind of played everything that I can and get got my hands on. So these are the characters I'm having fun with right now, plus their builds. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and learned something. Definitely try them out. And as always, stay safe and healthy. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.